I'm John o. Buchanan. OK, so we know about EQ, right? It feels like on this channel I've made a number of different videos exploring EQ in a whole range of ways. And indeed, there is even a course now, Essentials EQ. Go and check that out if you want to learn more about EQ. But what we're going to do in this video is to look at a specific thing that is now coming into modern EQ designs. Logic actually needs to do a little bit of catching up on this front, so we're going to be going outside of Logic to look at this video to explore a particular technique which is referred to as spectral EQ. So, EQ, as we know, is a tool that allows us to adjust the tone of sounds. And we can either do that in very broad ways, using low cuts or high shelves to roll out frequency content at either end of the mix, or we can use it in what we refer to as a kind of more surgical way. So when we've got a sound which has got a particularly bold collection of frequencies, we might decide that really thin little narrow bands need addressing because they're over resonant, they're too loud, they're problematic in some way. And before I explain exactly how we can use spectral EQs to adjust those nodes and why they are really advantageous, we should listen to some music, don't you think? I think so too. And we can't both be wrong. listen to that for hours. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? OK, so what we're actually going to do is to focus in on this first sound up here, which is called Clockwork Ballerina, which is an alchemy patch. I'm going to just solo that sound, and we're going to listen to a little of this by itself. This is, by the way, the sound that's producing all of this lovely decay, which we're listening to right at the end. By itself, it sounds like this. <laughs> It's also got a little bit of a kind of undertone in it, which probably makes you feel a little bit like you've left your phone on silent mode and it's ringing on a work surface. Are you getting that? I'm getting a little bit of that from this sound. OK, we're going to ignore that for a moment, although it's going to probably bug you all the way through this video. It's almost like I've done it on purpose. I haven't, I promise. OK, so I was talking about EQ. Let's just fire up an EQ. We're going to fire up Logic's EQ for a moment. And we're going to see what happens when we analyze a sound like this. Now, there is a kind of bell-like quality to this sound. It's got a lot of qualities. It's got a pad-like quality too, and even a sort of rhythmic thing happening. But particularly in its upper frequency content, it's got the kind of narrow, loud, harmonic overtones that we associate with bell sounds. There's a kind of weird purity to bells where we get a fundamental frequency and then a series of kind of very defined overtones. And that's fine when we play an individual note. EQ can deal with those moments, but the moment we change that note, the harmonic footprint of that sound changes as well. So maybe what we do is we EQ a sound to deal with the problem overtones at particular notes. And then the moment we play a different note, new little spikes appear. What can we do about that? Well, I'm going to show you what I mean. If I hold down a single note here, we can see very defined overtones. We can see the fundamental frequency, which is happening just south of 200 hertz. And then we can hear this kind of insistent thing that's happening over the top. I'm going to play it again. And playing it a little louder, we can begin to see some of the other frequency nodes that are turning up too. So let's suppose I decided that what I wanted to do was to try and eradicate the problem that is happening at around, well, between one and two kilohertz when I play this sound. Well, I can do that. I'm going to hold it down. And what I'm going to do is to engage 
one of the kind of um, the uh, parametric options within the channel EQ to focus in on the specific frequency and to drop its volume. And of course, what I can do is to use the bandwidth to make this super narrow. So what I'm doing is I'm just surgically dealing with this particular overtone when I play the note F. Let's track it down and see if we can kind of kill this overtone. And we could keep going. I'm going to find the next one as well. And what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing. We're going to make these really narrow. I'm going to keep playing the same note. And what we're slowly doing is basically notching out all of the overtones that are problematic. Now you can hear the difference when I bypass the EQ and obviously we could go further. I've got more nodes that I could engage. I could go after the individual sounds, but that's me playing an F. What happens when I play a B flat? Well, it turns out that all of my EQ nodes are now in the wrong places because of course the harmonic footprint has moved. I would need, in theory, this kind of stalactite super aggressive surgical EQ to be applied on every single possible note I might want to use if what I want to do is to deal with this in a kind of way where the harmonic overtones are being dealt with across the board. I suppose the only other way that I could try and tackle that would be to make an incredibly wide EQ band, which was dropping the volume of loads of frequencies. But then effectively, I've just got a volume control. I'm just literally turning down the volume of loads of different things. If what I want to do is to preserve the sound overall, but what I want to be able to do is to deal with the possibility of those harmonic spikes, I need to think about EQ in a slightly different way. And at the moment, Logic doesn't really have an EQ that's going to allow me to do that. So at this point, what we're going to do is to abandon the channel EQ. And instead, what I'm going to do is to fire up the Fab Filter Pro Q4, which absolutely does allow me to tackle this particular problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that kind of wide band that I was talking about. I'm going to make a kind of frequency zone, which is going to be super wide. I'm going to adjust the bandwidth control. So it's covering a lot of frequencies from around here-ish, around 200 Hertz, which I think is kind of more or less where the fundamental frequency is going to be if I play the F. But what I've got now is a really wide band that's kind of stretching up into the upper frequency ranges as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control and click on this band and I'm going to make this band spectral. Now, what that means immediately is that Logic is going to start looking for the spectral spikes that exist within this sound and it's going to attenuate, cut their volume, in other words, that's what that word means, much more significantly than anything which isn't that loud. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to open up this pane literally here and I'm going to drop the threshold value for this band down so that it's picking up a lot of frequency content. And what that means is that when I play the original F, we're going to see what happens to the overtones which are being generated by this sound. So what I've done there is I've dropped the potential range for how much volume loss there is significantly. That's this little arrow here. What I'm doing there is I'm basically saying, okay, when you detect, I'm talking now to the Pro Q4, when you, Pro Q4, detect a harmonic overtone, which is significantly loud, what I want you to do is to go to work on it really hard, but I want you to preserve the bits in between those frequency areas which aren't so loud. In other words, we're dealing with the super hard overtone harmonics, but we're leaving the gaps in between those alone. 
And the huge advantage of working this way is that if I change the note, Each pitch generates its own set of overtones, but because the band is covering all of that potential content, it's going to effectively track the pitch that I play, and it's going to deal with all of those harmonics irrespective of the pitches that I play. And if I start playing chords, like the MIDI region that I've actually played in, it's going to deal with those two. Let's listen to that in context. Here is that sound without any of this spectral EQ happening. I'll punch it in at bar nine. So that's obviously really extreme. A couple of things I could do to kind of back down the effect. So firstly, I could make sure that all of the kind of volume drop um, analysis, the kind of nodes and how much they are attenuated is much less. In other words, I can drag this upward so that I'm losing less volume out of them. And of course, the other thing I can do is to focus in on a specific group of frequencies. So if I decide that actually the kind of lower nodes are much less of a problem, I can make the bandwidth much smaller. But what this allows us to do is to really focus in on just problematic overtones as they move around in pitch. Now, you're going to find that this is true in all kinds of sounds. So let's suppose you've programmed strings using a library that's got a lot of byte in it. And as you move from one note to another, where that byte actually turns up as a series of overtones from the note that you're triggering might move. Similarly, you might be working with a vocalist who's got some wonderful kind of gravelly quality to their voice. And as they move from one note to another, that kind of overtone rasp moves too. Well, the great thing about spectral EQ is that it's going to move as the pitch bass moves. Remember, there's this amazing relationship between pitch and tone. We talk about those two things as if they're different concepts, but they really aren't. The tone, the overtones, the harmonics, they're all the same thing, and harmonics relate to pitch. You see, these interesting relationships that come when we analyze pitch and tone together. So that is spectral EQ. It's an amazingly powerful and useful thing if what you want to do is to track down overtones that are problematic when you move from one note to another.